And we're really looking forward to that triple header in the Barclays Center in Brooklyn on March 9, our first visit to that new facility. A rainy, chilly night in Atlantic City. And coming up here, our main event, Adrian Broner versus Gavin Reese. I, I respect uh, Cabbage Reed. What's your name? I, I, Cabbage. I don't know his name. I don't know his name. Come Saturday night, um, I'm sure I look forward to knocking your head off because you're one cocky cock. I'm guaranteeing to win this fight. Adrian Broner, if he's underestimated me, carry on. He won't be after Saturday night, that's for sure. He, he should be happy to be in the ring with a future Hall of Famer. Uh, we're going to see how, how long he can stand, stand his ass whooping. All right, so let's take a moment now to get ready and set up Adrian Broner versus Gavin Reese. Max Kellerman Broner is coming off a brilliant performance here in Atlantic City, hammering Antonio DeMarco in his last fight. A lot of people thought it would be a much tougher bout than it turned out to be. So what's at stake for Broner here tonight? Well, according to the odds makers, not much. They have Broner as high as an 80 to 1 favorite. That's 8-0, 80 to 1. And that's because of Broner's performances in recent fights, particularly the one Jim just mentioned against Anthony DeMarco, where Broner took his advantages in speed and skill and punching power and strength, and rather than fight a safety-conscious fight, fought the kind of fight that truly maximized all those advantages by getting in punching range and beating the hell out of Anthony DeMarco in a virtuoso performance. Now boxing fans expect the world. The only danger for Broner is if he doesn't deliver it. Gavin Reese, for his part, says those 80 to 1 odds don't mean anything at all. He thinks this is a fight that he can win. Roy Jones, early in his career, when he was fighting in the Joe Calzaki colony there in Wales, fighting for Enzo Calzaki, he fought in that style, throwing as many as 100, 110 punches per round. Now he's chosen a new trainer, Gary Lockett, and has moved to a more measured boxing approach. Which approach would serve him best against Broner tonight? I think the more measured boxing approach will serve him best, mainly because if he goes out and throws 100 punches around, he's going to wear himself down some. Broner's style is to come out and make you wear yourself down. Once you wear yourself down, he walks you down. So if he's smart about this and wants to have any slight chance of winning, he probably should come out with a measured attack, take his time, and try to make himself be able to sustain 12 hard rounds. So far in his career, Adrian Broner has looked like the ideal combination of both a great defender and a walk-you-down aggressive offensive fighter. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for Broner and Gavin Reese now, and you can see the nine-year age difference in favor of the Cincinnati fighter, three-and-a-half-inch height difference in favor of the Cincinnati fighter, two-inch arm length difference measured from the armpit to the end of the fist in favor of the Cincinnati fighter. He weighed in one pound under the 135-pound limit. Gavin Reese was a half pound heavier than that, and tonight, According to our unofficial HBO scale, they will both weigh 150 pounds. Max, let's take a look at the divisional picture for the lightweight division. Well, Broner is considered the class of the division. He'll fight Reese tonight, obviously. And then the other two belt holders, Ricky Burns and Miguel Vasquez, are going to fight. The winner, unless we get a draw there, becomes the opponent for Broner. Broner seems to hope that that guy will be Ricky Burns, who has a following. Ricky Burns was the first choice for Broner's opponent tonight. An offer was made to Burns to try to get him to come from Scotland to fight Broner, but at the end of the day, he priced himself out of this in favor of fighting Miguel Vasquez. A lack of discipline outside the ring nearly derailed Gavin Reese's professional prospects. But after winning the British Boxing Competition prize fighter a couple of years ago, and then hooking up with trainer Gary Lockett, the Welshman rediscovered the path towards success. I always loved boxing, it's just um, wasn't living a lifestyle outside the ring. You know, I would train, go home, eat the wrong foods, probably drink a few cans of lager. I did it, I got by our natural ability. In 2009, when in a competition called Price Fighter, I went on to win that, beating three European champions. I tell the truth, I was drinking two weeks before that, and I went on to win it. And after that, then I teamed up with uh, my training out, Gary Lockett. 
he sold me out, he said he wasn't going to take none of the nonsense of me drinking, partying. Since I've been with him, been 100% dedicated. Wish I was like this from the age of 20. But, you know, I can't regret too much what's gone on. I'm looking forward to the future. And I'm looking forward to becoming world champion on Saturday and then going on from there. Now making his way to the ring, he's the pride of Wales. Gavin the Rock Breeze! 37 wins, one loss, and one draw. We mentioned the five weeks spent in New York preparing for this. No word on whether he sampled the lager there, although he says he's now living a much cleaner, straighter life and should do better than would have been the case a couple of years ago. Yeah, he says he's turned his life around. We hope he's turned it around because tonight is the opportunity for us to see truly who he is. And by the way, who he is is a guy who held a belt at 140 pounds, pulling off an upset, who when he lost it, lost it to a very good fighter in Andre Kotelnik. And it went 12 rounds, he got stopped late. Um, there's no real such thing as an 80 to one underdog in boxing between world-class fighters. The odds seem out of whack. And we've seen other guys come from across the pond and score major upsets. In a lot of the boxing press, they've been referencing Lloyd Hunnigan's win against Donald Curry a couple decades ago, when Curry was considered the best fighter in the world and got beat. But most experts think the more likely reference would be to the experience of the man who is training Gavin Reese, Gary Lockett, came here at the absolute peak of Kelly Pavlik's career to face Pavlik for Pavlik's middleweight championship and got hammered out in only a few rounds. So now here's Adrian Broner and that headset the, on his head, the gear there, has to do with the fact that Broner enters to rap music and raps along with the music as he comes in. As he says, he's a performer. When he fought Antonio DeMarco last November 17th, Adrian Broner came to the ring wearing pink trunks and pink gloves. It's the color associated with breast cancer awareness, the disease that has impacted the lives of so many, the Broner family being no exception. Uh, my grandmother's name was um, Deborah Powell. She was the sweetest lady that I ever met. She cooked for everybody, the whole block, my coach. Everybody missed her cooking. I mean, she was an amazing lady. She kept me on track. When I was 12 years old, my grandmother was diagnosed with, with breast cancer. Um, she actually passed away on my 13th birthday. She was already in a hospital. Me and my twin brother, we, uh, we got up, we got dressed, we went up there and she was just gone. She, she loved me boxing, so did the Marco fight. The pink trunks, the pink gloves, is, um, it was for everybody who's going through this. And then just with me going through it with my grandmother, you know, it, it, really, it really meant something to me. From Cincinnati, Ohio, here comes the champion. Pancat. Yeah, Adrian. let's go. The problem grown
Roy Jones, every ring expert's favorite comparison is to Floyd Mayweather. How is he similar and how is he different? Well, he's similar in, he does fight behind that shoulder for defense, but he's very different in, he comes out there to destroy you. Not to just survive or not just outbox you, but he wants to completely destroy you. And his hands aren't brittle as Mayweather's were early in his career, which affected Floyd's punching power, I think, early had to protect those hands. Um, this crowd is not the thickest I've ever seen, but considering we're in the middle of February in Atlantic City, and Broner's in against an enormous underdog, and the main support to the fight was canceled. It's, a, it's really not a bad crowd that he's attracted here. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of Caesars Atlantic City, welcome to the Boardwalk Hall here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, USA, for the main event of the evening, brought to you by Golden Boy Promotions. This is 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Lightweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Corona Extra La Cerveza Mas Fina and sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Commissioner Aram M. Davis, Chairman Tony Orlando, WBC President Jose Suleiman, WBC Supervisor of Ringside, Michael George. The three judges scoring will be Eugene Grant, John Kane, and Julie Letterman. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Earl Brown. And now, the officials are ready, the fighters are ready. So for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, this is HBO World Championship Boxing uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the red corner with head trainer Gary Lockett, wearing blue with red official weight, 134 and one half pounds. His professional record, 37 victories with 19 knockouts, only one defeat and one draw. He's the challenger tonight and he's the fighting pride of Newbridge, Wales, United Kingdom, the former WBA super lightweight world champion, Gavin The Rock Rees. And fighting out of the blue corner with his head trainer, Michael Stafford, wearing red, white, and silver, officially weighing in at 134 pounds. His professional record, 25 fights, 25 victories, including 21 knockouts. From Cincinnati, Ohio, the two-time, two-division world champion and reigning, defending, undefeated, WBC lightweight champion of the world, Adrian, the problem. Adrian, come on. All right, gentlemen, you receive your instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Uh, anything from here down is going to be considered low. Anything from here down is going to be considered low. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, let's get this thing on. When we met with Adrian Broner yesterday, and he was asked, the kind of pr about the kind of pressure he feels after that DeMarco performance to follow that up. He said he's not going to try to top himself, but trust him, we'll love it. I hope so. The odds on this fight make Tyson Douglas look like an expected squeaker. So we'll see whether the bookmakers have it right as they give Reese no chance whatsoever. 
Broner is longer, willowier, as you can see. Quicker, it almost goes without saying. And Reese begins with a chopping right hand to the back of Broner's head. Referee Earl Brown moves forward to caution him on it. Broner blocked Reese's left with his right glove. Reese is not fighting like he's intimidated. No, he's not intimidated at all, but he does come straight down the pipe when he attacks Broner. That could be dangerous for him uh, later on, but he is not afraid at all, and uh, he's definitely here to try to win. You know what else? He's showing some speed here early. Reese is. <laughs> he did his homework, and he came to try to do the job. Couple of body shots for Reese. So far, Broner has contented himself to throw a couple of jabs. Hasn't unleashed a right hand. Reese believes he can take advantage of Broner's very wide stance, which Broner maintains so he can carry that punch all through the fight. But um, Reese believes that makes Broner hittable. Well, it might, in fact, create that situation, particularly for the body shots. Yeah, it could, but the problem he has, uh, Reese, that is, is that he's backing up. He can't back off of Broner and make it hard uh, to hit him because he has to push Broner back. Then it would be hard for Broner to adjust with the wide stance. A couple of left hooks to the body by Reese. The crowd is waking up just a little bit as they notice that Reese is making all the action. And Broner seems very relaxed. You know, Reese is winning the round so far. We're two-thirds of the way through it. More good body shots for Reese. Broner finally throws the right hand. It was just a tiny bit short. Good left hook by Broner, and Reese clocks him with the right hand upstairs. Another right hand lands for Reese. Don't push his head down, Adrian. Don't push his head down. Reese ducking a couple of Broner punches there at five feet four. That's quite a duck. Little right hand dropped in from Broner, but thought Reese won that round. Well, he certainly created more action. Okay. What I want you to do is go straight up the middle. Keep, keep hopping, take your time. Keep taking your time, working your jab. Okay. All right. Work your jab. And the right hand is right there, right over that left shoulder. You hear me? More on about. Uh, um, a little bit of a victim of your own success because when you move your feet and you pick him off, it's beautiful, right? But what you're doing is you're getting that little bit confident. Don't forget, this kid is a counter puncher. I warned him about pushing your head down, but you punch it on the top of his head. Don't punch him on the top of his head, okay. right? Okay, right. right. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm talking yeah. about, right? Don't lunge. Right? Don't lunge. Here you see uh, he come, Reese come with two beautiful left body shots. Something that we haven't seen many guys try on Broner, but at least he came to try something different. That was a good double left to the body and something that we don't expect to see out of most of his opponents. CompuBox numbers in round one. CompuBox saw Broner landing 14 to 34, and Reese 13 of 56. Harold Letterman agreed with Max Kellerman that Gavin Reese won round one. Reese came in with a game plan so far. He's executing it, and he's ha he has the hand speed to do it. That's the most surprising thing so far to me, is Reese's hands. <laughs> Pretty quick. Well, again, as long as Reese can maintain some of that hand speed and Broner wants to stand with his feet that wide apart, he'll land body shots. Don't push your head down. He Let also just quick. landed a pretty good straight right punch. hand. Fight. More body shots from Reese. Broner reaching with a jab and shaking his head. And Broner's right, He's most of this stuff isn't landing that solidly, but it's most of the punching is being done by Reese. What, what Broner's doing is trying to take Reese's confidence right now, but that's why he keeps shaking his head, telling him no. In other words, yeah, you're landing, but it's doing nothing to me. I'm right here on top of you, and I'm going to be in your face being a problem all night. That's what he's basically trying to do to Reese. 
Reese going to have to hit Reese harder to take his confidence away. Reese is a cocky little Welshman. And Reese is also moving his head more than he has in the past. One of the reasons the odds were so long is Reese has not shown a lot of head movement in the past, and Broner's a big puncher. But you heard the caution of Gary Lockett between rounds, and he said, watch out, he's a counterpuncher. Left hook lands upstairs for Reese, and that gets a big rise from the crowd. They and he lands up. two more body shots. He caught Broner in the middle of a shuffle. Hook off. And Reese is doing something, at least so far, that the good old-time small pressure fighters did, which is use their lack of height to their advantage. By getting so low, it becomes hard for their opponent to hit them. But staying outside, he's going to run into big problems with that straight right hand. And now Broner's starting to land some clean shots. Broner's starting to pick Reese up a little bit. Right hand lead for Broner. Good right hand by Broner. Dropping the right hand on Reese's chin. Another good body shot for Reese. Another right hand upstairs. Gavin Reese is in the fight all the way through the first couple of rounds. But that straight right hand is starting to close the eye a little bit. But he may want to start trying to keep that off of him. <laughs> Not an easy round to score, but it appeared Reese was again more active. I agree. Okay, come on, sit back. Okay, March 16, Timothy Bradley fights for the first time oh, since his disputed listen, victory listen over Manny Pacquiao, facing Sam, Ruslan Probudnikov, immediately following that show. Stay tuned for Road to Rio's Alvarado 2. A look at both men as they prepare for their March 30 rematch of their outstanding fight in October, won by Brandon Rios. Let's go. Come on, push it out now. Okay. All right, let's go. Right now. Right open, bro. Yeah, let's go. Push it out now. Push it out. Right now. Energy back him up, keep backing him up, you know what I'm saying? He's saying, uh, Broner wind up with the right hand, faint the left, then roll up with the bolo and steal the straight right lead, straight down the middle. Boom, good right hand down the middle. But he comes back and he shows a little bit too much, and Reese catches him while he's in the middle of a shuffle with a good left hook. But Broner took it. Copy box numbers in two. Broner was 18 of 53, pretty good. But Gavin Reese was 24 of 54 including 19 of 36 power shots. Right, even though Broner landed some good shots in that round to give you the sense he was in control, while he was giving you that sense, Reese was landing punches. Solid shots by Broner there, countering as Reese dived in. Left took shot. Now Broner is giving ground in an attempt to find his range as Reese comes in. Oh. Round three, Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. World Championship Boxing main event, Adrian <laughs> Broner in the red trunks against Gavin Reese in the red and blue. Reese from oh. Wales, Broner from Cincinnati. Oh. Good right here by Broner. Reese dropping his hands and showing Broner his head movement. There's no lack of confidence, that's for sure. As I said, he is one cocky little Welshman. And he has a sneaky quick left hook that he brings from so down low and then throws it up top that it's invisible to, to Broner to the last second. There it is, right there. Broner's hand speed starting great more opportunities oh, Bruna, for him. Broner hurt him bad with that yep. left hook right there. Yep. Almost dropped him with that left hook. <laughs> Uppercut by Broner. Oh, hold him. Punch out. Punch out. Let him go. <laughs> Tell you what, Reese has the heart of a champion. You can believe that. Because he's taking some big shots. 
he's still coming at Broner with everything he's got. Here's a body shot for Broner. Uppercut lands for Broner. Starting to get more accurate. Starting to pick Reese off. And Reese reaches out and grabs and holds Broner by the waist. Broner turns to wave at the crowd. And, and here's one of the elements about, of Broner that's so fantastic is here's a, a real game uh, awkward challenger who's bringing the fight to him and won the first couple rounds and Broner has that power on top of the speed and the skills to change a fight quickly. Hey, don't let him hold you no more, you hear me? You break him, hey, you break him down when he start holding you and stuff, okay? All right, don't let him hold you. You know what I'm saying? About two more okay, rounds, let's go. All right, you see everything? All right, all right. You've got, you got to move these feet, right? You've yeah. got to pick him off and not reach. Don't fight his okay? fight. Because when you do that, you're out working him because he's only throwing ones and twos. Yeah. It's when you stand inside, that's when you stand one low threes, fours and fives, okay? Yeah. All right, son? Come on now. You have to practice what we've been doing in the gym, all right? Here you see Broner with that wind-up right hand again. That right hand lead has been his best weapon. All right, let's go. After that, he pushed, launched a big attack against the ropes. Hit him with a nice uppercut, a right hook. Great combination work on the ropes. Broner started to pile up some copy box numbers in the third round. 25 of 38 power shots against 7 of 25 for Reese. Adrian Broner went to a different level in the third round. Harold, how do you have it, 2-3? You know, Jim, the momentum of the fight is changing. 2-1, to 29-28, Gavin Reese. Well, I thought Gavin Reese clearly won the first two rounds. But then again, Adrian Broner was clouded, you know? It was like he gave up the gave the first two rounds away. In round three, Adrian Broner became Adrian Broner. You know, really showed what he's got. He dropped good right hands on Gavin Reese. He clearly won the third round. Two to one, Gavin Reese. I heard Gary Lockett in the corner tell Reese not to reach. And I think Reese is reaching in that last round, Roy, was because Broner gave him a little distance and started oh. coming in. There he is. Right uppercut towards Gavin Reese. And he's hurt pretty Six. bad. Seven. Eight. Where you at? Huh? Okay, all right, go. Only the second time in his career that Gavin Reese has tasted canvas. Broner did oh, it with a single it. shot. A beautiful right up cut. When he went down against Katelnik in 08, that was in the 12th round after a long fight. So this is the first time that Reese has ever been knocked down while still relatively fresh in the fight. Reese trying to get to those body shots again and slow Broner down a little bit. But Broner is getting into the target practice area. <laughs> Gavin Reese is in trouble as Broner begins to flash that hand speed and throw blinding combinations. He knows Reese is going to be right there in front of him, so he's letting him have it right there in front of him. And look at the heart of Gavin Reese. Oh, he he a... goes back into the jaws of the lion. And he has a big heart. And he's perfectly prepared for this fight, and he had a perfect game plan, and Broner's starting to beat him up anyway. Still some fight left in Gavin Reese. A lot of fight left in Reese. It'll be interesting to see what Gary Lockett has to say after this round. I love Lockett's style as a trainer and the way he's communicating with the fighter. They have a great future doing that. Tell you what, I like Broner's attack up and down. He's working the head and the body. Most young guys don't do this. You've got to remember, he's only 23 years old. He has a, a calculated body attack. He almost dropped him with a body shot right there. Gavin Reese took some hellacious punishment in the fourth round. Spit out, spit out. Robin's legs. Listen to me. 
listen to me. Listen, listen. You give a good go. Listen. No, you, you, that, listen, right. listen to me. You can't. No, you can't. You're taking too much punishment. Right. Right. No. There's that beautiful right up cut right on the chin that uh, Reese was not looking for. Caught him off guard, and like we say all the time, it's the punch that you don't see coming that catches you. He came in with a right hand and stayed right in the middle. He hit him up with the elbow, and boom, there was the right up cut. Right as he thought Ronald was going to exit. And we're looking at two reactions to the knockdown. There's Gavin Reese's girlfriend, Kayla. As soon as Reese hit the canvas, she got up and ran out of the arena. Now, that's, that's Broner's father to the left, Thomas Knight, and his trainer, Mike Stafford, sitting next to him. And I mentioned Gary Lockett's style as a trainer. Mike Stafford is proving with Adrian Broner, as he already proved with many amateurs, including Rashi Warren, that he is a tremendous trainer, capable of teaching a fighter maximum skills. Power shots in the fourth round. Broner was 40 of 67. Reese, 22 of 58, as he kept fighting back. And I think that's probably what Gary Lockett was saying between rounds is, if you keep going after him like this, you're going to take too many counter punches. Well, I think Lockett started thinking about stopping the fight just now. He did. He did. And the bad thing about it is that Broner just said the round before that that he thought uh, Reese had two more rounds and it was over with for him. Reese rips Broner with two right hands. Broner's already gotten hit more in this fight than in his last three fights combined. <laughs> That Larkin, I mean, that Reese has a heart, son. He is one stubborn guy. No question about it. Yeah, I'd like to see Reese some more. Because he, he, he's started to take a real beating in the last two rounds, but here he is. Oh, good shot. Our corner man in Gavin Reese's corner is telling us that Gary Lockett did, in fact, Call referee Earl Brown over and wanted to stop the fight, and Reese talked him out of it. And a good thing, I guess, because Reese has landed two solid right hands in this round. Well, he's trying his hardest, son. It doesn't get better than this as far as an effort. Yeah, he's taking a beating at the hands of Adrian Broner, but he beat a lot of lightweights, and he's still fighting and still hitting Broner cleanly. He's definitely showing that Broner can be hit. But he hits back as well. <laughs> right. And that's why Broner can be hit in spite of all the physical advantages. Because Broner enters the ring to hurt his opponent. And I think that more than wrapping on the weight of the ring and clowning and all that, that's what's connecting with the fans. The appreciation of a superior athlete, a superior skilled fighter who uses that stuff to do damage 100 percent it's because he's an offensive fighter he is there to try to knock his opponent out oh oh another uppercut this time with the left hand to the body though six how you feel seven and reese said it was a low blow Eight. but it was a body shot that reese wasn't ready for he Six. thought it was gonna go? break all right let's go the so broner has scored knockdowns with both the right uppercut and the left uppercut. Now Reese is in trouble again, and Gary Lockett is up on the ring apron with the white towel. So there's the TKO as trainer Gary Lockett gets what he wants, stopping the fight from the corner. Good stoppage from Gary Lockett. And by the way, good performance as a trainer. He yep. had his man prepared as well as you can prepare a fighter. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we'll see more of Gary Lockett, the trainer, and we'll see more of Gavin Reese, the fighter, and we're certainly going to see a whole lot more of Mike Stafford and Adrian Broner. <laughs> Broner said, we'll love it. When was the last time he turned in a performance that you didn't want to see? And he closed the show here, landing 40 of 57 power shots before Lockett was able to get the referee to see the white towel. Wow. Well, Roy, you just said wow. Cause Let's take a look at some replays. First, I, the knockdown, Roy. Yeah, I like the right-hand lead. I love the right-hand lead all night long, but the body shot here is the one that caught him, and it caught him because right there he relaxed. Ronald noticed he relaxed, and boom, there was the body shot right as he relaxed. 
And it wasn't low. It was right on or above oh, the belt line. A perfect body shot. That's why they tell you to protect yourself at all times. He wasn't it ready, working? so it caught him. Once again, that right hand lead, and they lock up a little bit. Just as he relaxes right there, Bronner sees that the ref's not coming in, so he's still fighting. And that was a great body shot. You relax like that, and your stomach muscles go slack. Yeah, where everything goes flat. Now here's Lockett. Doing a as great job. Broner was firing combinations to Gavin Reese's head. Lockett gave it a moment of wait and then had seen it up. Yes. He did a great job of protecting his fighter because his fighter would not have protected himself. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Earl Brown calls a halt to the bout. The official time, two minutes, 59 seconds of round number five. The winner by knockout victory, still WBC lightweight champion of the world, still undefeated from Cincinnati, Ohio. Adrian, the problem, Brona. Punch zone graphic, which will show you, first of all, the punch has landed on Adrian Broner. And that's fairly interesting that Broner took 88 shots from Gavin Reese, who came in so aggressive and so commanding in the first couple of rounds, actually won the first couple of rounds. Maybe Broner will say that he allowed him to win them, but nevertheless, Reese was making a statement and making the fans interested at that time. Then the onslaught began in the third round, and from three through five, you can see what Broner ultimately did to Reese, including 112 punches to the head. That's why Lockett ultimately pulled out the towel. He didn't want to see any more of it. Gavin Reese had never been knocked down early in a fight before. Broner put him down with a right-hand uppercut and a left-hand uppercut. It was once again quite a show. Let's go to Max Kellerman in the ring with the winner. No brush? Is, oh, no, there it is. You know, hey, you know I can't start no interview without getting my hair brushed. You know, that's the ritual. It's a great performance. Before we get to what you did, that's a good little fighter over there. He hits you more in, in the first couple rounds than you've been hitting your last three fights, it seems. Uh, that's a tough steak, but I ate it. Why? I knew coming into the fight, like I said in HBO, I mean, he's going to come to fight. It's a tough, world-class fighter. Um, you know, I had, to, I had to see how much gas was in that little Toyota he was pushing. By the third round, you started to take over the fight. What was the change? Ah, uh, man, you know, I, it's different levels, man. You know, if they go up to one level, I go to the next level. That's all that was. But uh, I'm sorry, man. I, I want to apologize to everybody who came out to support me. I didn't give y'all much to see, but I put on the show. And I want to thanks to Golden Boy, HBO, Al Heyman, um, Azad Watches, um, the whole U.S., Co the, the Colorado, the Army, Army team, old school boxing gym mom. But you know, man, I, I love having fun. I love entertaining. It was entertaining, and you could be entertaining beating the hell out of a lot of guys. Um, but boxing fans are already starting to toss your name around with the best fighters in the world. They want to see those kind of fights. What's next? Man, come on, man. Everybody know I'm still the can, man. Anybody still can get it. Max, you can get it. Anybody can get it, man. You know, any, I, I don't care. Who, whoever they put in front of me, I'm going to fight. And the winner of Vasquez... And, uh, and Ricky Burns? Who is that? I don't even know them guys. Does that mean you'll be going up to 140? Because those are the biggest names currently at 135. <laughs> they big names because Adrian Brunner at 140, but I'm going to keep that. We're going to go to the drawing board with Al Heyman and Golden Boy and on our promotions. But you know, uh, I'm fresh, I'm flying flashy. I came in, man. I did my thing. Hey, if they didn't stop the fight, he was going to go to sleep anyway. Rock about, baby. Adrian, congratulations. Another fantastic performance. Uh, we, we could play some knockdowns, I, I guess, if you want, but uh, there were so many of them, and you beat the hell out of them. You, would you like to see and comment some? I mean, everybody knows sex sale. I'm pretty. I want to keep seeing myself on TV. Explain what's going on here. Ah, oh, man, the uppercut. Uh. And him go down. Down goes Reese. Reed, Reese, what's his name? 
<laughs> Gavin Reese, and then in round five. Ah, oh, man. I cooked him. He was underwater like a, like a neck bone. Uh, look at the body shot. We saw you at one point kind of hold him with the left forearm to land the straight right hand. There you knocked him down with the body shot. We saw the uppercut. What's your best shot? Uh, my best shot is when I take a picture. Somebody take a picture of me. <laughs> and on that, congratulations again, Jim. All right. He's 23 years old. He's awfully good, Roy, but you have to assume there's still something of a learning process going on. What did he get the opportunity to learn tonight? Well, he got the opportunity to learn tonight that everybody who comes at you because you're the champion, they come to give it their all. They come to try to win that championship belt for the first time. This kid came from a long ways away. He was a guy that we really didn't know much about, but he came to win. He came as though he was a true challenger and that he wanted to present a problem. Unquestionably, the top two American fighters right now are Floyd Mayweather and Andre Ward. The question becomes, how long is it before we begin to put Broner somewhere near their league? It's too early for that yet, but clearly that will be his target, to get into the area where he can be compared legitimately as a talent with Floyd Mayweather and Andre Ward. And by all lights, from what we see here, it certainly appears that somewhere down the road, that discussion is likely to take place. Thanks for being with us tonight. February 19, Real Sports profiles MMA fighter Ronda Rousey. She's got the looks and she's undefeated with her signature, signature armbar move. Most opponents don't even last a minute in the ring. March 9, it's a boxing triple header headlined by Tavoris Cloud versus Bernard Hopkins at the new Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Also that night, Chris Ariola faces Bramani Stiverin from California and in Brooklyn, Keith Thurman against Jan Zabek. Immediately following boxing that night, stay tuned for my show, The Fight Game, where we tackle timely and informative subjects in the world of boxing. You just know something will be going on. And now for our entire crew, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from Atlantic City, New Jersey. March 9th on HBO World Championship Boxing. It's an action-packed triple header. Undefeated Tavoris Cloud defends his light heavyweight title against future Hall of Famer Bernard the Executioner Hopkins, who is looking to break his own record as the oldest fighter to win a title. Good left by Hopkins. Plus, top contender Keith Thurman puts his undefeated record on the line against former welterweight champion Jan Zabek. But first, the night opens with a heavyweight title eliminator between knockout artists Chris Ariola and Berman Stiver. Oh, left hand rocked him! HBO World Championship Boxing, Cloud versus Hopkins, live Saturday, March 9th at 9.30.